Hello guys, welcome to my JPA basic mappings using Spring Boot. Um, in this session, I'm going to take a look in how we can map um, objects to the database using JPA. So, what we're going to do is basically this model. We're going to map this model here where you have a customer which can have one or more orders, the same customer can have one or many phone numbers and the phone numbers they can belong, the same phone number actually, they can belong to more than one customer and the order uh, have one, it has one or many items where each item has one product so that's uh, basically a point of sale idea or even a online sh online shop online shopping online shopping who can make orders which has items and each item has a product and I just added uh, an extra object which is the phone numbers so yeah let's get started so let's just clean up everything here start from scratch so we have here an empty project it's a basic Spring Boot project. If you're not familiar with Spring Boot, uh, please take a look at my uh, first two videos about how to build applications with Spring Boot. So the link is uh, on the description of this video as well. So let's basically just go through my POM file. I'm using Maven to run this application. So it's pretty much um, all the basic stuff. So I have my application name, it's being packaged as a jar file so the description I'm using Spring Boot 133 release and I'm basically add, adding few dependencies one of them is uh, Spring Boot Starter Web so it's kind of a uh, web application simulation um, although I won't be presenting any fancy GUI. I also have the starter JPA. It's very important for us to map and to keep you working with those entities. Lombok, which is a very cool library that uh, helps us to get rid of, uh, of from a lot of boilerplate code, such as getting a setter. So um, I'm gonna highlight this piece as well. Uh, MySQL connector, I'll be using uh, a MySQL database and also the test dependence. So I'll, I'll be building some, some, basic, some basic tests just uh, to show how the whole thing wires together. Okay, uh, yeah, that's basically the idea. Um, if I try to run this application, it's probably cr gonna crash because we have no uh, no configuration. So there is no mappings, there are no entities, there is nothing. So uh, let's then get started to our application. So what we're gonna do first is start uh, creating this. Uh, models, these model objects, and also some configurations for the database. So uh, the base, uh, the base configuration goes inside our application properties, which is the file where uh, Spring Boot will read all the configurations. So we need here to specify what is our database, the connections, and the dialect we're going to use. So it's going to be MySQL, as I said. So it's basically pointing to my local host and using the default port plus a database. Okay, um, what else? That's that's the first part. Okay, uh, one thing that that we'll be doing as well is we'll be using Hibernate under 
uh, the JPA. So uh, we're going to create uh, our database using Hibernate. So once we map that class, we can tell Hibernate to create uh, our schema based on our models, it's, which is a pretty cool um, feature. Another thing we're going to do is to tell Hibernate to show all SQL segments and also and it's going to be the last configuration is to okay you just print all the SQL statements as a debug pretty cool I think that's the base configuration um, next step we have to create that database, which the name is JPA Based Mappings. Let me grab my my SQL. I am already connected, so let me just connect it again. Create database JPA Based Mappings. Okay, database has been created. Now I'm going to use JPA based mappings. So, okay, I'm there. Show tables. There is nothing there. So, it's a brand new database. That's it. Our base configuration. So, um, I think the first uh, the first model we can create is the is the customer. Okay, let me. Create a new class for the customer. Actually, just place on a, on a proper package domain. And here is our customer class. Okay. First thing is to annotate is as an entity. So we're telling JPA. That class is going to be an entity class, which means we're going to map it to something in the database. Right now, it's a customer table. We can also specify a table name. So let's use that table in the plural. Okay, so next step is to define uh, an identity for that table. Which is gonna be a long ID field. Next step, another field. Okay, I have now a field called ID and another field called name on a table called customers. Okay, remember I spoke about Lombok. Uh, Lombok. Is a very nice uh, library. I'll just be placing uh, that link as well on the video description. So it makes our lives a lot easier. For example, I can just annotate that class to have getters and setters. Okay, just paste the configuration here. That's it. From now on, uh, all all of the class fields ha they have one getter and one setter. So Lombok does that automatically. So there is a plugin for IntelliJ and Eclipse as well. Uh, okay, what else we need? Uh, I think it's pretty much it. I think you can just run this application and see what's gonna happen okay that's our log okay uh, see based on this configuration which is where to connect the username and my database has no password so I don't need to specify one and which database I'm using which is my SQL and okay, Hibernate, you can create my, my schema 
and show all SQLs and print everything you can from from the SQL as well. So this is what Hibernate did. It just tried to drop the table if it existed. So just print the new da database. So it created a new table, which we can take a look here now. Show tables. Yeah, I have table customers. Set from customers. There's nothing there yet. So and that's basically it. So for the customer, I'm going to to drop my table customers. Yeah. Just finishing finish all the all the mappings, and then I can generate those tables again. So this is my first um, class. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now I'm going to create a an order object. Yep. This customer can have one or many orders. So let's let's see how can we do that. Let's create another class called order. Oh, the process is basically the same. So let's say it's an entity. Uh, there is a table name associated, which is going to be orders. Uh, let's create getter and setters. Getter and setters. And let's add some fields. I'm gonna add basically two fields first. One is the order ID, which is the identity. It's gonna be the primary key. The second one is the date where that order was created. Okay, pretty cool. So far, so good. Two fields. Same thing as in customer, nothing fancy. But now the extra step is just uh, to associate uh, a customer to orders. It's a basic step. We're going to map uh, a list of orders here. Uh, no, actually. Sorry, actually, actually it's, that's that's the opposite. I'm going to map the customer here, okay, and then we're going to tell Hibernate that there is a an association of one to one, and the joint column is the customer ID. Okay, remember that there is an ID here. And the order, it's gonna be a new table, so it, it's gonna have a foreign key called customer ID. Uh, let me run again, so just to show how is it gonna be in the database. So we see here uh, two tables customer, orders, and see there is a customer ID here. In the orders table, which is the foreign key. If we sneak peek in our database, so we have customers and orders. Yes, customers. Yep, ID name. Yes, orders. ID created at and customers. That's how the the one too many uh, <coughs> happens. It's gonna happen. Actually, we map it as as one to one. So, but one customer can uh, can appear here more than once. So it's gonna be one too many. 
the same, the same customer can make many orders. Okay. That's good. Yeah, just true. Just for a, a some check, let's let's drop the tables. Okay. Yeah, there is there is a foreign key which is enabled. Enabled, so I'm just let's go to brute force, drop the database and Create it again. That's yeah, pretty cool. Use JK base mappings. That's it. Show tables. Nothing here. That's it. Okay. Thank you. We can go to our next step. Uh, let's see here. What what's the next? Um, what's the next class? Um, let's create uh, a product as well because we're gonna need one. So it's a product here. Just do it step by step. Uh, the process is exactly the same. It's a new class product. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an entity again, and the table itself it's it's gonna be called products. So we have two fields. One field is the ID. And the second field is the product name. That's basically it. So I'm just going a bit further. Um, I'm going out to create uh, the item model. The item model belongs to the order object. So one order has one or many items, which is related to one product. Each item relates to a single product. Um, it's something like whenever we go to Amazon, for example. Uh, let me get there. That's it. So if you go to my shopping cart, for example, something that has been sitting here forever. Um, yeah, I can have many items in my shopping cart or many items in my in my order that's that's a basic idea so let's let's create the the item class and yeah create the mapping as well pretty simple okay it's an entity we want getter setters and the table name is gonna be called items. Oh, it's gonna have an ID. And a quantity. That's that's a basic idea. And now we're going to relate um, the item class to the product class. Remember, each item inside the order is related to one product. That's basically mapping uh, manage one. Okay. And that's basically it. So uh, we're gonna have uh, a foreign key on the items table, which relates to one product. So let's just uh, 
go back a little bit so we have customers we have orders which each order is related to one, one customer we have also product which can be anything can be a book a car or something else and we have an item that belongs to the order let me just run this one just to take a look at how how is the database yep we have one table called customers another table called items table orders um, let's see the items yeah we have a foreign key for the product ID pretty cool in the orders as so before we have a customer ID, which points to the customer, and the product has only ID and name. Let's take a look in the database and see how things are right now. Show tables, yeah. We have more tables. This desk items. That's basically so. Each item has a quantity and it's related, it, it is related to a product. Pretty cool. Uh, let me drop it again. And let me create that database. Pretty cool. Let me finish my mappings. So, what else is missing? Okay, now we are going to associate. Uh, the order to the items so inside the order we're going to have a list of items because the items belong to the order and we are going to map is as one to many mm, yep one to many so one order has many items and we're saying here okay uh, we have a cascade operation uh, we can cascade to persist which means we can just uh, create the order and the items pack them together and say save order so it will save in cascade mode save the order first then save the items and then assign the order ID to, the, to each item same thing happens to remove once we remove an order so it removes all the items and I'm telling it to telling Hibernate to fetch it in a nigger mode. So once I load a order, it loads all the items automatically. So it's mapped by the order class. Um, yep. And inside the item class, we're going to do the inverse. We're gonna say many to one, okay? Many items will belong to a specific order which is mapped by the order ID. So, yeah, we have one to many and many to one. That's it. Let's run again and see how. Let's just rerun. Let's see how the database will go this time. Beautiful. So I have the customers items. Um, inside the item, we have a foreign key for the order because the order will um, will be the item parent. We also have a reference to the product. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look in the, the database just to double check if everything is fine. Show tables. Oh yeah, of course. Have to use, use the database first. That's it. Desk items. It was the last one we did. So we have the product and we have the order ID as well. So yep, the remaining the remaining entities they stay the same. Customers. Customers. Yep, pretty cool. Um, let me just drop 
Let's database. Yeah. Show tables. Nothing here. Just do the last bit, which is just assign uh, phone numbers to the customer. So each customer can have many phone numbers, and one phone number can the can belong to more than one customer. Customer. Let's say we have a family buying, so they all share the same landline. So we're going to have a class called phone number. And we're going to have the same getters and setters. And table name as well. So it can be phone numbers. We have two fields here first. So again, it's the ID and the value. The value is going to be a phone number. Such as, you know, zero four something. Yeah, or you choose. Um, and we will also have a a reference for the customers. Okay. So it has. Uh, many customers and in the customer we're going to have the same kind of association so this is this is how one one way of the many to many uh, association works so we say that the customer class has many phone numbers and the class phone number has many customers so what uh, hibernate will, will do under JP, of course, is to create an association table between customer and phone number, so we can we can have this many-to-many -many association. Um, I think I didn't forget anything. Let's try it again. Yep, beautiful. Okay, I have here phone numbers, uh, ID, value. Pretty cool. And let's take a look inside the database. Show tables. Yeah. Desk phone numbers. Yep. Beautiful. Desk customers. And see, this is this is the table where the many to many. Uh, is happening if you desk stable so the stable has a customer ID plus a phone numbers ID this one comes from the customer this one com comes from the phone number table that's basically it. that's how uh, <coughs> we map these basic associations using JPA it's, it's working now uh, let's now uh, add a test so we can we can prove that um, our code works. So no, let's close this thing. So what we're gonna do is basically to <coughs> create a test that runs the application, and we we'll try to play a little bit with that with it. Just uh, loading data from the database and saving something, delete something else. Um, let's see. First thing, let's uh, let me create a test. So, um, yeah, create one test. Yep, yeah, just create one test. So it's just gonna. It's not going to be a unit test. It, it could be, but I want to run as an integration test. Spring has a 
pretty cool test feature. So you can say run with Spring JUnit, load uh, the application configuration from the basic mappings, and it's a web application configuration. Okay. Uh, the first test uh, we're going to add is Uh, that it should return many funds for cus for a given customer. Uh, but before doing that, let me create uh, a few repositories because we need to extract pull and push data to the database. Um, repository, new class. Let me create one, one repository for each class, one for customer, one for order, and another one for the product. Yep, let's extend from uh, the current repository. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the order repository. This is one interface. And the last one for the product. So we'll create a product repository. Interface before it starts complaining. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, the idea is for the customer repository is I can find a customer by name, the order, which I can find an order by a given customer, and the product, I can find a product by its name as well. So that's it. Uh, let me close these guys, close others. Okay. Um, yeah, first thing is to annotate is a test method. Okay. Um, but for this test, is we will need uh, to do a trick, which is to populate the database with some uh, dummy data. So yeah, there are lots of techniques for doing that. I'm going to use uh, this Spring at SQL annotation. Let me just create a new, um, a new director here called resources. Okay, and then I'm going to create two files in there. Okay, I have one file called clear tables and another one populate tables. What clear tables do is does is uh, it simply uh, cleans everything. So I'm just disabling the constraints. Don't do this in production, of course. I'm doing that because it's a safe environment. It's my local test database, or unless you you are you really know what you're doing in production, but don't. And the second script is to populate some data. Um, and populate some customers, some phone numbers, some 
I'm associating a customer to phone numbers. So remember that uh, inside each class we have uh, auto-generated ID. So the ID starts with one. That's why I was able to infer here that as a first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So I'm associating myself with the first phone number and so on. Creating products and then creating order, one order with three items. That's basically it. Uh, I need two more things, which is SQL annotation, which I'm instructing Spring to once you run it, once you are about to run this test, run these two scripts in this specific order. First of all, try to clean up everything, and then you populate my database. Okay, um, and for the test itself, that's basically finding myself. Let me refactor here. Uh, okay, it's myself now. And I also have a customer repository here, which I'm going to inject instead of my test. That's it. So that's that's a basic stuff. So just run my test. Yeah, it works. All green. I was able to run it uh, ran the web application. It, uh, it populated my tables, did everything I wanted, and that's it. So I, I had my, my clean database to run my test. But basically, it finds uh, by name a customer called Marcio, and then I assert that the phone number's list size is equal to 2 see here okay that's it Marcio has two phone numbers associated so phone number one and phone number four same thing uh, for the other tests let me just add the other repositories Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to add one test to delete something. So let me delete one order. And again, I'm cleaning up the tables and populating them again. Uh, I'm finding a customer called Jonas, uh, which is, where are you Jonas? Yeah, which is number two. Then I'm trying to find an order that belongs to Jonas. Actually, I have only one. I know because uh, I created one here. Let's see, um, the customer ID number two belongs to Jonas. So it's his order. Um, then I load that order and I say, okay, delete that order. And after that, I try to search for all orders and I assert that there is no order anymore for any customer. Yeah, just one moment. Let's see. Yeah, all green. Let's pass it. All good. Yep. And the last test, which is a bit uh, trickier than the others, bigger. 
I'm playing around uh, creating an order. So yeah, let me import these things. So remember that I said about Lombok, so I can have I can also have a builder. Yeah, that's it. It generates a builder pattern for me for free. Uh, yep, that's it. Beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, it's basically um, find myself in the repository. So I'm building a new order. So okay, I am the new customer. The order has been created today and create the order so I find uh, two products one is the Mazda 3 car and the second one is a popcorn I built an item based on those uh, based on the Mazda car so this build where a product is a Mazda the order is my order <coughs> quantity is equals to 3 and build same thing for my popcorn. So I pack these two items inside the list. Remember, uh, inside the order, we have a list of items. So we have to assign a list. And we are setting the items here. And I'm, and I'm telling, okay, now you save that order. What's gonna happen is um, Hibernate under JPA will save the order and then we will associate the order ID to each item and we'll save the items as well. So after that, I, f uh, I look for all orders. So I get this second order. Let's remember it's a list. So item zero is the original order from uh, Jonas, here, here, and then I simply uh, start comparing. Okay, uh, the items is true because I just added two items item one and item two. Uh, the first item is a Mazda car, and the second item is a pop car. Yeah, that's basically it. Let's see if it's going to work. No, it didn't work. Oh yeah, we have no more default constructor inside our order. Because we said it's a it has a builder pattern now, so you just remove that default constructor, but you can just add them again. Um, and also on the product, let me add another annotation. This implement equals in hash code, so this comparison can go can go right. And let's do it again. Okay. Yeah, same thing for item. Item also has a builder. Let's add those two annotations. And let's run the test again. Beautiful. Voila. Uh, everything is fine. We have our tests. We have our project. We know how to map 
one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many relationships. So, I hope you, you guys have enjoyed my video. Uh, all the useful links and descriptions are in the video description. And stay tuned, so more interesting things are coming. Bye-bye.